In this video, we're going to take a look at solving projectile problems, which involves the use of vectors because we have motion in X and Y at the same time. And we'll look at uh, three different kinds of problems. I'm going to call this a clip problem. And let's take a look. 100 aims directly at a target on the same level, 75 meters away, the bullet leaves the gun at a speed of 180. By how much will it miss the target and what angle should the gun be aimed so as to hit the target? Oh, so this is a two for one. All right, so let's take our workspace and we'll divide it into two parts. And this, at what angle? Uh, is a range problem. <laughs> okay. So the scenario in the clip problem looks like this. That our object and our bullet uh, it's going to be fired, but under the influence of gravity, it's going to be made to fall. So in our, let's start off by listing what we have for variables to work with. And of course, you know, we've modified our, our variables a little bit. So here's our initial velocity in the X direction. And then uh, it's aimed at a uh, target that's 75 meters away. And it wants to know how much we're going to miss by. So, um, so this is our difference in variables. So this would be the initial height and then this is the final height. And we're looking for the difference between these two. So uh, there's two distinct kinds of motion that's happening here. There is the horizontal motion and vertical. So here are the variables that we know about so far. Horizontal is constant velocity, so acceleration is equal to zero. And vertical is under the influence of gravity, so acceleration is equal to minus g. All right, so we have possibly an X initial position, an X final position, um, and then just the velocity long X. There's no initial velocity, there's no difference because that velocity is gonna be constant. And of course there's a time. Now for the vertical part, there's an initial height, there's a final height, which is what we're looking for. Uh, initial velocity in the Y direction, final velocity in the Y direction, Acceleration term we're going to leave out because it's minus g, and then we'll have time. Okay, so now let's take a look at what we've got for givens. Um, you know, we would use the initial x if we had like a head start or something, but we don't have anything like that, so we just say that's zero. And this is going to be 75, and then this is going to be 180 meters per second. So double check the units, look at it, and time is what we don't know. So initial velocity, I might as well call that zero. And then this is what I'm looking for, but the initial velocity in one direction is zero because it's launched horizontal. Horizontal projectile. And final velocity, I don't know in time, I don't know. However, that is what links the two motions together. So that's going to be the same. Okay, great. <clears throat> now let's uh, take a quick look here. Uh, we want the horizontal motion, so that's going to be uh, x equals 
x0 plus vt. And so we want 75 is equal to 0 plus 180 times time. And so we can solve for time. So 75 divided by 180. And it's a pretty small time, but it is a bullet after all. So zero point, uh, keep some digits hanging around here. So 0 0.417 seconds. Now the y motion would look like this. Y is equal to Y zero plus V zero Y T minus one half GT squared. And now I know the time because that's what links the two together. So I don't know what the final height is, but I know the initial height zero plus zero times time, which is still zero. And then minus one half G. So we write that all the time. So let's just call it minus 4.9 T squared. And that's 0 0.417 squared. Okay, so 4.9 times my answer squared. Okay, 0.85 meters. Yeah, so as long as the uh, gun is fired level with the target, you're always gonna miss. You always could, it doesn't matter how fast the projectile is. So if the projectile is uh, going fast, it's gonna travel pretty far along X, but it's still gonna be low people on the target, uh, moderate speeds, uh, slow speeds, or what if you had uh, somebody just dropped a bullet from here to here? It would take the same amount of time to fall. That's because horizontal and vertical quantities are independent. Okay, so in the next one, we have sort of a range problem. And now we have 75 meters for a distance to cover. but we're gonna launch this at an angle. So now our initial velocity is going to have X and Y components. Velocity in the X direction, I'm not gonna bother with the V zero because it doesn't change. Even though it's less than what this is, it's still not going to change. And then this will be velocity in the y direction. And this one will change. And we're actually looking for the angle. OK. <clears throat> Do the same thing. Let's list our our quantities. So uh, x zero, we don't really have that. Uh, x is still going to be seventy five, and my velocity along x is going to be equal to v zero cosine theta, whatever theta is. And then time, I don't know. And then initial y position and final y position and initial velocity in the y direction, which would be V zero sine theta. And then final velocity, we don't know. And time is also unknown. Now, the interesting thing about these two quantities is if it lands at the same height that it took off from, we might as well call them both zero. So when we take a look at the equations of motion, we'll write those down again.
Now we'll put in what we know. So this is going to be 75 times 0 equals V0, which is 180. Cosine theta times T. I guess we just want to know what T is. Then we come over here and uh, put in our zeros to so 0, 0 plus 180 sine theta times t minus 4.9 t squared. OK, so we've got theta as a variable and time as a variable. It's a little dicey here, but let's uh, make some simplification. So I'm going to move the 4.9 to the other side, so everything's positive. I'm going to cancel one factor of time. So this will be 4.9 e equals 180 sine theta. And then over here, uh, I can't really do very much. But what I could do is I could uh, do a substitution. So I could substitute for time. So that's going to be 75 over 180 cosine theta. And then I'll stick it in over here. So 4.9. And then the time is make our substitution 75 over 180 cosine theta. I know it's a little messy, messy, right? So 180 times the sign theta. Okay, great. So I forgot my equal sign. That's right there. Okay, great. So what do we have now? So uh, 75. Is equal to 180 squared times the sine of theta and then multiplied by the cosine of theta. And then I'll bring this over to the other side too. So this is one half of G, which is if we okay. Well, we're pulling back from this, and I'm reminded of something called the range formula. Because it's a little tricky, right? We're trying to solve for theta. So you can make a trigonometric substitution. It's called one of the half angle uh, theorems. Uh, but the range formula in general can be looked at as V zero times the sine of two theta divided by G. And now if I'm looking for For the angle, we have to remember that we know all these things. I'm running a little low on space here, but let's squeeze it in. So 75 is equal to 180 squared and um, g is in the denominator and sine 2 theta. Okay, so I'm multiplying by 9.8, dividing by that. So sine of 2 theta is going to be equal to, so 75 times 9.8 divided by 180 squared. Let's see what we got. Point 
0227. Uh, almost there. Point zero two two seven. Okay, and here's how I'm running out of space. So uh, I want to do inverse sine. So two theta is equal to inverse sine of uh, this number. Point zero two two seven. Right, so here's how I do it on my calculator. I'm going to go at the inverse button, sign, and of my most recent answer. So one point, let's call it 1.3 degrees. But that's two theta, so I still have to divide by two. Right, so 0. 0.65 degrees. Hmm, okay. Well, geez, this is a lot of work. Why did we do all that, Joe, if we could just supply the range formula? And the answer is, I wanted to give you an example about how to set things up. But if you had to find the maximum height, the range formula is not gonna help you. So, and, um, but it's still truly the case that the time to the maximum height is half the, the total time Okay, let's keep going with uh, just one more. I'll hold off on that other one. Okay, so projectile fired with initial speed angle above the horizontal on a long flat firing range. So this is a range problem. Okay, we have a lot of information here, so let's uh, take a shot. We want total time in the air, total distance, and so the distance is equal to the range. And then shot at an angle, it flies through the air. So we want to find out that height as well. And 65.2 meters per second at an angle of 34.5 degrees. Okay, and then the velocity of the projectile one. Okay, fine. Great, so we have the motion along X, and then we have the motion along Y. All right, uh, initial position along X, nothing special about that, so we'll call it zero. Um, X is actually what we're looking for, that's the range. Velocity along x is going to be equal to v0 cosine theta, but we know both of those, not like the last problem, so we can go ahead and type them right in. And uh, so that's going to be 65.2 times cosine 34.5, okay, 53.7. Right, that's what we need. That's what's gonna carry us from left to right. Y motion, uh, Y zero is zero. Final Y, well, there's a couple, so I'm just gonna kind of leave it hanging. And then initial velocity in the Y direction is gonna be V zero sine theta. And so I'll just bring back that, what I typed in last time and do sine instead. 36.9. And then final velocity in the y direction, I don't know, uh, but it is gonna be initial velocity in the y direction minus GT. So, cause I think we might have to look for it. And then time is unknown. Okay. 
So I can get some of the information uh, right now by just doing the range formula. So let's take a look at the range formula, to find out how far it goes. So in the range formula, that's V0 squared, sine two theta, Okay, great. I know V0, that's 65.2. I know the angle. Sine of two times 35.4. And all divided by 9.8. So these are all just numbers. Okay, great. So 65.2 squared times sine, and then two times 34.5 divided by 9.8. Okay, so I get 405 meters. So now I know what this is. This is 405 meters. And time, it looks like we have a chance to, to find time here. Okay, great. So uh, X equals VX time. So time is x over v. Okay, great. <clears throat> so 405 divided by just the x component of the velocity, which is 53.7. So 7.54. Okay, great. What else we have? Total time in the air. Yep, so we've got that. This is the answer to how far. This is the total time in the air. And uh, maximum height. So we haven't done that yet. But the maximum height, I can take this time that I just kind of divide that by two. So that's 3.77 seconds. And now that's a question about y, so I can stick it into the y equation of motion. So y is equal to y0 plus v0y times t minus one half g t squared. Okay, so the y value is equal to zero plus 316 <laughs> times time which is 3.77. Um, let's see, <laughs> 2.77, just a little stall there, minus 4.9, and then 3.77 squared. Okay, max height, we're almost there. So uh, 36.9 times the answer I got previously, minus 4.9 times the answer I got previously squared. It's pretty high, 
meters. Okay, good. So let's just do a quick inventory and see how we're doing. We've got um, the horizontal distance. So that's the answer to C. We've got the X value. Or, sorry, we have the time. So total time in the air. So this is the answer to B. Max height, this is the answer to A. So we only have one more to do. And that's the velocity of the projectile after 1.5 seconds. OK, so the velocity along x doesn't change. But the velocity along y does, and it changes like this. Right? Initial velocity minus gravity times time seemed like a way in. All right. <clears throat> Okay. <clears throat> so this last is D. The uh, velocity along X is still going to be equal to 53.7 meters per second. And the velocity along Y is going to be equal to whatever the original was. Um, and And the initial velocity in the y direction is 36.9 minus eight. Uh, gravity, 9.8. And then the time value, which was uh, 3.77. Okay, and again, that's just the number. So let's see what we got. 36.9 minus 9.8 times and 3.77. Okay, so I got a small negative number. It's on the way down. Just double check and make sure I did that right. All right, um, so it's a negative number. It means it's starting to come down. So the magnitude of the velocity is equal to right. So Pythagorean theorem. And we're going to take the square root of the whole thing. OK. It's going to come out pretty close to 53.7 miles. OK, and that's square root 2. Take the square root of the whole thing. Great, so 53.7 squared plus 0 0.041 squared. Let's see what that comes out to be second. 53.7 meters per second. And then theta is equal to inverse tangent. of y over x. And
scrolls. Second 10.045 divided by 53.7, and it's going to be about zero anyway, but a little bit negative. So 0 0.05, let's say. Whoops. Yeah, that's fine. Just call it degrees. Whew. It's a long one, but that's just about everything you need. All right, we'll post this. <laughs> 